Hello everyone and welcome to this course on modern application development. Okay, now with all of the different mechanisms that can be used for implementing uh, access control, let's look at the notion of sessions. Now, what do we mean by session management? The idea of a session is that a client might send multiple requests to the server and the server needs to have some kind of state information. What is the client doing? Are they logged in? You know, uh, have they got anything in the shopping cart? What's the present state of information that I know about the client? Okay. And the server can then customize responses based on the client session information. Now, all this means that there has to be some form of storage, some information has to be stored somewhere, right? You could have something which is a so called client side station where everything gets stored just in inside a cookie itself, okay? Or alternatively, you could have something called a server side station where the cookie is still used, the cookie sort of just tells the server which is the client, and the Server then needs to look up in its internal database and say, okay, fine, for this user, use this background color. For this user, use this shopping cart. Right? And they have currently added these items to the shopping cart. All of that information is now stored in the server end. Right? All this ultimately is, you know, these are all mechanisms that have been put together because HTTP by its very nature was stable. And we need to sort of hack something on top of it in order to provide that sense of state of the system okay and the final mechanisms that have come up are actually quite elegant and reasonably easy to use but there are lots of cases you know they were sort of added on after the fact so there are multiple cases where security issues were discovered only well after some ideas were introduced so the cookie itself as we saw earlier you know will be set by the server with the set cookie header the client must return it on each request now the cookie by itself is after all just a string, it can itself be used to store certain information. So some things like for example what is the desired font or the desired background color could be stored inside the cookie. right? And the server will then each time it gets a request it sort of unwraps the cookie, looks inside it, finds out what information to use, changes the page based on that and sends it back. Can be done that way, probably not with this system, but you know it could be done if required. What that means is if you decide to store something sensitive like the username inside a cookie, then you have to ensure that it cannot be altered. Because otherwise, let's say that a client logs in as some user ABC, right? They get a cookie, the client then goes and modifies that cookie and changes the name to root. Next time when they send back the cookie, the server thinks, oh, root is logging in, let me give them the full admin dashboard and allow them to change anything they want. Okay. So the client should not be able to change the cookie. That can also obviously be done, right? The server needs to have some kind of a secret of its own, which it uses in order to encrypt the cookie and send it back. Which means that the client just has that cookie, it can send it back to the server each time. But it can't really modify it in any way because it does not know the secret that the server used. So an example of this using Flask, right? So Flask has a module called Session. Okay, this is basically for simple client-side sessions. Right? Server-side sessions require something a little bit more complicated. They usually require some additional add-ins to Flask. So, like I said, you know, there has to be a secret key associated, which is used for encrypting the cookie. Right? If you don't keep this secret, that's bad news because it means that the client will be able to alter the cookie if required. Okay? So this is important. When you are creating an app, you need to make sure that any secret keys that you put in are actually kept secret. The other thing is this should not ever be in your source code. Okay? In particular, it should never go into version control systems. Usually, the place to put it would be in some kind of config dot uh, you know, config .py or some kind of file of that sort, where that config dot .py is never put into version control by itself. Okay, you need to create a config dot .py each time fresh when you are creating a new instance of the app. So, how does this session work? It's as simple as this, right? I mean, so basically, the root path there is a function index defined over there. 
it just checks. So session finally ends up becoming a dictionary. And what we are saying is, if the key username is present in the session dictionary, then you can just return logged in as session of username, right? So this basically is a dictionary, right? If not, then it basically says you are not logged in. Okay. So it becomes very easy to check certain values in the cookie, right? Now, what happens when I actually want to log in, right? That requires some additional piece of logic over there, I could create a slash login root with multiple get and post methods, right? If it is a post, it means that I'm actually logging in, okay? And what I do is I just basically take this variable session of username, take whatever is provided from the form as username and set it into this and redirect to index. And if it was a get request on the other hand, I will show the HTML form. Okay. Now this is very insecure, right? And obviously you should only take this as a basic example of how sessions work. Why? Because it is completely trivial for me. I mean, this form doesn't ask for a password. It doesn't ask for anything. I can just type any name I want and you know enter it over there, right? So this is just a demonstration of how I can use a cookie. So you should not in any way think that this is actually a valid way of enforcing logging. Right? The one thing of course is whatever you entered over here is what will get set into session of username. After that once you get the cookie back you will still not be able to modify it because you don't know the secret. Right? How about logging out? That's also quite easy to do. I can just session.pop allows me to just take out the username key and you know just remove it from the session. Okay. And then redirect me back to index, which means that at that point I will go back and it will you know show me this thing. It will say you are not logged in. Okay. And maybe redirect me to login or show me the login page or whatever it is. That's up to you how you choose to do it. So of course the security issues, can the user modify the cookie? In which case they can change their username to anything they want. What happens if someone else gets hold of the cookie? Can they log in as the same user? Quite possible, especially this is dangerous in public uh, machines, right? So let's say you go to a browsing center, internet center, you log in to something, your cookies are all there on the system. Unless you explicitly type log out, you know, you make sure that you log out of the system, then the server deletes the cookie then even if somebody gets hold of that machine, they can't do anything with it, right? Because there's no sort of confidential information stored in the cookie itself. But if you forget to log out, it means that somebody else who's coming along and using that machine can log in as you. Okay. There is also something called a cross-site request, which can be used in order to, you know, get you to automatically submit a request to another site. Let's say I'm logged into Gmail on one tab of a browser, and I go to some other site where there is one malicious piece of code, right, which basically says just go and change the password on Gmail, right, submit to a form on Gmail directly the information asking me to change the password, okay. Now, since I'm already logged into Gmail, the end, you know, the Gmail server can't easily make out whether the request came from that particular page where I clicked on it or from somewhere else because after all it's coming from the same machine from the same browser okay and all the authentication cookie all of that is perfectly fine what happened is there was a different site which somehow induced me to send a request to gmail to change my password or change my account information okay. so the server can't really make that out there is a way of getting around this, which is basically the server actually sets a token along with each form where something sensitive like uh, emails or passwords or anything need to be changed. Okay. And if that is the case, then that you know you can only get to the email change form from a known path. Okay. Again, like I said, that's a little bit out of scope of uh, what we need to do over here, but it is something that we need to be aware of. Cross-site request forgeries are a major security issue and usually what happens is that you know most frameworks have ways of dealing with this so make sure you're aware of it and take it into account in whatever you are implementing 
Now, what happens on the server side, right? You need to maintain the client information of the server. The cookie by itself only provides a minimal lookup information. All that it says is it's not easy to alter. But the server then needs to take care of storing the rest of the information about the client. There are multiple backends that are available, right? You could directly store something into a file or you could store it in a database. There are other kinds of, you know, the so-called key value stores like Redis, which are very high performance things that are just meant for storing the information about who's currently logged in. It makes it very easy to check whether a particular user is logged in, it's lightweight and you know, a lot of information about the user could be stored in that. But it's also temporary because Redis does not really save things to disk by default. So usually what you would do is all the temporary session storage would be in Redis and then eventually if something needs to be updated in the master database, you get that done separately. Now, how do you go about enforcing authentication? Right? Some parts of the site must be protected and the question becomes, how should I enforce it? We already looked at the mechanisms, right? which means that some kind of a specific token, whether it's the, you know, the, the uh, basic authentication token which came about because I did a 401 on right, or it's an API level token or some other token must be given by the client to the server in order to access those queues. Okay? Now, at the application level, how do you do this sort of fine grained control? I'm not sort of, you know, the server itself is not sort of saying, okay, you either have access to the entire site or you don't. It's saying, your grades, this particular piece of information you have access to. Okay. So how do I do that kind of fine grained control? I need to protect a specific view and who determines which view I get to see? The controller. Which means that I now need to basically protect access to the controller. And the simple way of thinking about it is, I have a controller already in place which has been routed in a specific way. Can I add some extra functionality around it to check the authentication status? And how do I add functionality? Use a decorator. Okay. An example is there is a module called Flask Login, right? A separate Python module. Now, this is not the only way that you can implement logins. So I'm just using this as an example. Right? I'm not sort of recommending this as necessarily the only way of doing logins. But in this Flask login module, there are a few functions. One of them is called login required. It also has information, which is the current user. Right, So these are functions. Okay. So what you do is you have the main.root or app.root and basically say slash profile. And what it says is that in order to see the slash profile path, Right? I need to be logged in. How do I specify that? I put one more decorator. So see how decorators have been chained over here. Right? So there's an at main.root and inside that there's an at login required. Okay? So this is by the way a login underscore required. Right? To match what we have out here. And what it's saying is that I will then go run this functionality first for login required, which in turn will check whether the correct uh, authentication tokens and so on are present. If not, this login required will itself redirect you to the login page. But if it is present, it will come back over here and render the template for profile.html, take the current user's name and pass that in and so on. Okay. So this decorator basically allowed me to change what access is there. I could have done something more. I could have had a decorator which also checks the role perhaps, right, and say that either this particular user or if I'm an admin, right, then allow the admin access to any user's information, okay, so that's also a possibility that can be done, right. Now how do you log out? Once again, the interesting thing is you still need to have this decorator login required because otherwise, you know, you can't log out unless you're logged in to start with. But all that the logout needs to do is essentially call the logout user functionality. What would that do? This has to delete the session information on the server side. So this is after all your Flask code, right? On the server side, the moment that logout user function is called, it just has to locally delete the session information and then go back to the main index. Okay. 
So by using decorators, you can basically enforce authentication on specific control domains. Now, all of this is fine, but the one question that comes up in relation to all of this is, how do we make the wire itself safe? That is to say, I am transmitting information from client to server and from server back to the client, right? I already know that the main problem is that the attacker should not be able to read the data. So how do I go about making this wire safe and ensuring that the attacker by themselves cannot see what is being 